Hi, thanks for joining me. So today I want to talk about a anime series, an anime series that I just finished watching, uh, the first season of, and that is Yawara, a fashionable judo girl. Now, uh, this is something that was, um, it was originally released in the late 80s, early 90s. I think the anime started in 89. Um, and went through the, the early 90s. Now, um, the manga began earlier than that. I think it was around 1987, something like that, uh, was when the manga started, 86. Um, look those numbers up, just to, just to be sure. But I did sort of a cursory check, and that's what I remember. Now, um, this is a, a manga by uh, Naoki Urasawa, and you may be familiar with him from what seems to have become his slightly more well-known uh, series, at least sort of on the internet, uh, which is Monster. And um, Monster is something that I've been meaning to see for uh, a long time. Um, and, but, you know, this is my old man yells at cloud moment, where I'm just like, you know, I was, I was just introduced to him via Yawara. You know, so I'm, I'm assuming some people have been introduced to him via Monster, I was introduced to him via Yawara. So, Yawara is like the series that I associate with him, and it's kind of like the one I've been wanting to finish before I like go and check out Master Keaton, or 20th Century Boys, or Monster, or any of his other stuff that seems to be like fairly well renowned and, uh, and, uh, and, and respected. Um, but I think Yawara is a, is a fantastic start. It's not like the first thing that he ever worked on. I read that he, uh, was sort of did the illustration for a comic called uh, Pineapple Army, I think, something like that. Um, but it was sort of the first, I think it was the first thing that he really wrote and illustrated himself. And uh, it's it's great. It's it's excellent. Um, it's It reminds me very much of some show, some contemporary, you know, shows that were contemporary with it. Uh, very specifically, Maison Ikoku. Uh, I feel like in, sort of in structure and tone, it uh, it reminds me. I mean, maybe not entirely in tone, but it it's very similar in structure to Maison Ikoku, at least so far. Whereas Maison Ikoku is, of course, by um, Rumiko Takahashi, who also has done Urese Yatsura and Ranma One Half and Inuyasha and all of those things. So I guess in format, and then it's like it's a long format, and they made it into a long format television series. Uh, it, I believe, has like 120, 140 episodes, somewhere around in there, which is very similar to things like Maison Ikoku or Ranma One Half. And, uh, and it also, like, I, I also think thematically and structurally shares a lot of uh, themes with, with those sort of shows. It's, a, um, it's a, basically a high school teen, you know, into college age, um, drama, comedy, um, this one has a martial arts element to it, though. So, if I would say that maybe, like, around that time, maybe now you have sort of, like, maybe isekai shows are still, uh, kind of, like, a big, uh, genre, and they're willing to put money into making, like, relatively longer format television series out of them, and, like, it seems like a lot of them sort of have been informed by each other, and, and there's sort of a, like, a little bit of a culture in, in anime, like sort of a moment of isekai shows. I sort of feel like in the uh, in the 80s and early 90s, you kind of had some of these just bigger, more, I don't know, sort of like romantic comedy series. Uh, you had stuff, you know, like uh, Maison Ikoku and Rama One Half. You had even Sailor Moon. I feel like it this this shares some things with that, not in the magical girl aspect of it, but more in the like the teen romance aspect of it. And you know things like Marmalade Boy and stuff like that. I mean that that was just purely a kind of a teen romance series. Um, this, on the other hand, the main conflict really is uh, between I would say the the. Uh, grandfather Yawara and her grandfather, and they both kind of represent um, two uh, philosophies about uh, Yawara's life, which is Yawara wants to be a, a, a regular girl. She just wants to be a girl, and in some ways, her 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 childhood and a lot of her autonomy it has actually been taken away from her by her grandfather, who is who has instructed her in in the martial art of judo. 
um, since she was very small. So she feels a little bit resentful of that, and, um, you know, and she kind of just wants to, like, do her own thing. Um, so the other aspect of that is that she is a very talented athlete, and she, it, she basically, especially under his tutelage, has become a kind of a world-class, like, Olympic-class athlete. And, um, so part of the, most of the conflict, really, of the show is, is sort of between those two things of her, um, kind of just wanting to be normal, and also in some ways not realizing quite how, uh, how talented and how, um, you know, well-trained she's become in judo, uh, or, or basically not caring in a lot of ways, so she, she really doesn't, she almost doesn't, kind of doesn't care. Um, so, it, you know, it can be very comedic. Uh, they, they do a lot of uh, funny, uh, they have a lot of fun with this, this conflict. Um, for, for me, I think personally, um, sometimes this has been a little hard to watch just over the past, I don't know, week or two that I've, that I've watched it. Um, just because it, like, it, it, it hits some of my pain points just a little bit. Like, it, it just kind of tickles them, you know? And so there have been times when I was watching this where I'm like, is this really making me feel better, or is this making me feel more depressed? You know, and, and sometimes it was a little more depressed, but uh, I think for the most part it is it is kind of a fun uh, show. There is quite a bit of drama to it. Um, these other characters come in. This girl uh, ends up being from very, you know, within the first couple few sets, a uh, few episodes, um, kind of a rival to, uh, to Yawada. Um, Yawada doesn't really see her that way, uh, which is, you know, again, part of the, part of the comedy of the series. And, uh, and, and, you know, so, and you have a little bit of a romantic aspect, too, that you have this character who is a newspaper reporter who kind of, you know, discovers Yawada early on, and he's really into sports, and he really, um, he provides a kind of a nice counterpoint to Yawada in some ways, in that, like, he really, uh, he really loves sports, whereas Yawada is pretty ambivalent to it. And then you have this character here, who, he, he's great. And, you know, again, the, the parallels to Meizan Koku are very strong, especially just sort of in this, in this relationship here. So the, he's a very Godai-ish character. If you guys are familiar with Meizan Koku, and you should be, I'm wagging my finger at you guys. Um, and, uh, this guy, um, Kaz Kazumatsuri, who is, uh, he's, he's very much Mitaka from Meizane Koku, and I say very much Mitaka, he literally shares Mitaka's voice actor, who is also the voice actor for, um, Ryo Saiba from, from City Hunter, so if you're familiar with either of those shows, and the voice actor, uh, he, he was also Kenshiro in, uh, in Fist of the North Star, so you, you know the, the guy, he's like Kamiya something, I forget his name, but, um, but anyway, it's, it's, it's very fun with him in that voice role. And uh, it's, just, it's just a great uh, series. It's very well done. Um, you know, there were times watching it, kind of, it goes back and forth between, like, the, the like, there are judo matches in it. Uh, and those are quite exciting. Uh, and then there are, like, sometimes there are these really uh, kind of drama-heavy uh, segments, and, and those those are good, too, but, you know, so they, they kind of go back and forth, and sometimes, like, I feel like when I'm watching it, it, I would almost forget. It's like, oh, yeah, we've been in the drama for, like, a handful of episodes here. Probably we're going to get, like, some cool, like, judo stuff, too, coming up. But, you know, during the judo matches, there's always some drama going on also, and so it's there's there's a mix. It's, it's drama, there's some action, there's some comedy. Um... You know, I think if, again, like, I think of the stumbles at all, it's that, like, once in a while there's an episode where, like, I don't know, like, I would, it would just sort of bum me out, you know, um, or you get sort of frustrated at the characters, because some of, some of, uh, the conflicts do come around because of the characters being immature, you know, or doing something where you're like, no, why are you doing that, you know, why, oh, no, uh, or, or her, her grandfather being, like, a complete ass, you know, that, that happens too sometimes, you know, so some of it is, some of it you're just like, oh, come on, but this is really typical, I think, for these dramas of, of this time, and, um, and I think it really, it really holds up. Now, um, this, like, I, I don't remember if I mentioned, but this was released by Ani Meigo, and I love them, I love their releases, and I love what they do with them. Um, I, from what I read, they licensed this in 2006, and they released this DVD set in 2008, and unfortunately, I, I remember distinctly seeing this in the store. I was in Best Buy, 
and their their manufacturer retail price for this is 134.98, I think, or 95 or something. It's uh, it's 135 bucks, and that is fine in a lot of ways. I mean, this is the whole season, the first season, so um, I don't think that that's like a bad price for a whole like 40 episode season of an anime. But um, I remember when I saw it at the time, I was I didn't have money, you know, I, I, was, I didn't have a good job at the time, and I could not afford, uh, you know, just conceptually I couldn't, like when you, when you, when you don't have quite enough money, all money that you spend is money you don't have. I mean, you spend it, so you have it, but basically you always feel like you're spending money you don't have on food, on, you know, your rent, on your bills, on, on you know, crap like this that you buy. And um, so I couldn't justify spending money I didn't have on this. I didn't have $135 to spend, you know. And, and so I wonder a little bit if the reason why we didn't get the rest of the series, and like I think I said, it's like it's probably like a 120, 140 episode series somewhere around in that range. Um, maybe it's because this was $135 when it first came out. I don't know. I don't know. What I do know is that if they had, like, done this in maybe two like two DVD sets um, that were like you know 20 30 bucks or something like that I, pr I probably you know maybe 40 bucks I mean that's still I don't know I, I could probably have maybe finagled that but I don't know if that was the issue um, a couple of years later I think in 2010 um, they had said that they were not able to license the rest of this series so I don't know what it was with the licensing if it had to do with the sales of this or what but they just they weren't able to license the rest of the series and it's it's super too bad and I really think that like if someone like Sentai Filmworks or Viz or something picked up Yawada I think it's uh, it would it would be an excellent addition to the sort of the, the 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 longer format TV series that are coming out now uh, from that time period that I think are, are just they're all really great. I think uh, I think I'd really like to see that So anyway, that's all hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you'll join me again. Take care